after recent eye popping content that was released directly. On this FBI is the hunting end of the, Steve of Harvey Diddy after he flees the country on Diddy's arrest. As we know it. So I don't, I don't give him no energy. I give haters no energy. Steve ain't this. He think he this. You don't even know me. Everyone is talking about it right now. The shocking arrest of Sean Diddy Combs and the unbelievable fallout that's dragging some of the biggest names in the entertainment industry along with him. But there's one name in particular that's left everyone in disbelief. Steve Harvey. Yes, the same Steve Harvey that we all know from family-friendly TV shows like Family Feud and his long-standing career as a comedian and talk show host. The same Steve who has built an image as a clean, respectable, almost fatherly figure in the entertainment world. But behind that polished persona, it seems there may be a much darker side. Clearly, there is a criminal investigation underway and that they believe that there would be evidence of crimes in one or both of these homes. The bombshell news dropped like a ton of bricks when Diddy was arrested in Manhattan. Federal agents took him in on charges that sound like they're straight out of a crime thriller, racketeering, conspiracy, human exploitation, and more. Stacy Schneider. And Stacy, you say today's indictment reads like a mob indictment. What was most shocking to you of all these allegations? Yeah, the fact, Jake, that the government in, in this indictment presented evidence alleging that Sean Cones was running a criminal enterprise. This was huge. Diddy's business empire has spanned music, fashion, television, and nightlife for decades, but the arrest has blown. Hey, yo, New York! New York, we fucking did it! This shit just got even darker. The mayor of New York, the mayor of New York has just been indicted, bro. Some of y'all might be saying, so what? It just so happens this same mayor, not that long ago, gave P. Diddy the keys to New York. Literally gave Sean Combs, the dude that we've been talking about for the last week, with all the shit he's been doing, the keys to New York. Now all of a sudden he's been indicted. Now all of a sudden there's been an investigation on this guy and his connection to P. Diddy. What type of team did P. Diddy have, bro? This dude had everybody on his team, bro. Had the Avengers. He had the NYPD, the police department, the sheriff, the, the goddamn. And you had the mayor, the mayor of New York on your team too, dude handing you the keys to the whole city. This is crazy, bro. Who else does Pete Diddy have on his goddamn team? And this just shows you, bro, the level of corruption does not stop at any level. These people are crazy. I guarantee you these people have been through some type of crazy trauma or whatever in their old life to, to have them do this. And power is crazy. But man, who didn't Pete Diddy not have under control? This is crazy. Everything now that we see playing out was all the things I escaped. The car, the the shine, the loan, the puff that. I never got paid what I was worth, and I never got the respect I was worth. So that this thing that I got for puff is more like, you trying to keep me here, nigga? Mace, once the golden boy of bad boy records, has finally broken his silence on a topic that's lingered for decades, his deep-seated animosity towards Diddy. After years of cryptic comments and public fallout, the rapper, now 49, reveals the real reason behind his disdain for the man who once propelled him to stardom, with Diddy's recent arrest adding fuel to the fire. From Harlem streets to platinum albums, Mace's meteoric rise was closely tied to Diddy, but behind the scenes, Financial disputes and broken promises strained their relationship. But before we get into these revelations, we need to understand the early events that shaped Mace's extraordinary life and his relationship with Diddy. Good evening, I'm Byron Pitts in New York. We have breaking news this evening. New York Mayor Eric Adams has been indicted by a federal grand jury, according to sources familiar with the matter. Let's go straight to senior investigative correspondent Eric Kontersky on the phone with the very latest. Aaron, what can you tell us? Byron, we just heard a statement from Mayor Adams saying, I always knew that if I stood my ground for New Yorkers, that I would be a target, and a target I became. 
if I am charged, I am innocent, and I will fight this with every ounce of my strength and spirit. A statement of defiance a moment ago from Mayor Adams to ABC News after word came that he has been indicted by a federal grand jury in New York. Byron, this follows a 10-month investigation into corruption. It began with an investigation into the mayor's fundraising from his 2021 campaign and whether his campaign took illegal foreign money, particularly from Turkey, in exchange for uh, official favors by uh, Eric Adams. And the investigation has more recently ballooned into a broader corruption inquiry involving some of his top deputy mayors and others in his inner circle. Aaron, we all recall that months ago, I think, authorities seized his phone and, and members, of, members of his administration. Is this part of that investigation? It is, and it was a highly provocative step back in November when federal agents stopped a vehicle. Uh, to coming up, Sean will talk. That's why Jay-Z is running. That's why Jay-Z is nervous. Jaguar is talking about it. So many, so many other artists at the moment. The industry as an organization ends up in my office, in my office, unannounced, in my office saying, will you help me? I'm not part of it. Started speaking up about his very good friend. Just nine months ago, you were singing his praises. Diddy's been arrested and now some major names are getting dragged into this mess. We're talking about none other than Jay-Z and Beyonce. Allegedly, I'll say allegedly, because they make us, right? Minors did attend these parties. Minors. That charge has not been brought yet. Rumor has it they might have helped Diddy pull off these shocking crimes, and now they're trying to make a run for it. But Diddy also tried to flee, and we all know how that ended for him. Hip-hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs is in custody this morning after being detained overnight by federal authorities in New York. So, is the power couple about to face the same fate? Are Jay and Bay really involved in all this, or are they just trying to cover their tracks before it all blows up? Let's find out. Diddy's facing some heavy charges this week, racketeering conspiracy and ST. And he's pleaded not guilty, but he's still locked up until his federal trial in New York. So what's next for the 54-year-old music mogul? And what about the employees and associates who were allegedly caught up in all this? Damian Williams, the U.S. attorney behind the indictment, didn't give much away when asked if Diddy or others could be hit with even more charges. Seems like this case might have a lot more twists to come. I can't rule anything out. Anything's possible, Williams said. The investigation is very active and ongoing, and if you know anything about how this office works, you know developments are definitely on the horizon. But I can't say for sure right now. And Diddy had an agreement with them where they would help him market his daily own tequila brand. And Diddy took issue with Diego because they had described the daily own tequila liquor, Puffy's brand, they described it to their customer base as if it was an inner city, urban, quote unquote, ghetto, hip hop type of liquor. And Puffy took issue with that because he said, I'm a global icon. I'm a hip hop mogul. Don't limit my product just to black people. And by doing that, you're dissuading white people and non-blacks from buying my liquor. You're cutting my sales low. And I think you're doing it on purpose because you don't want De Leon tequila to outsell all your other European control brands. So Puffy accused Diego of racial discrimination in advertising and marketing. Diego got upset with Puff. British-based company. They said, you done already made a billion dollars off of us. How dare you sue us and try to make a few more billion off of us? Diego and Puff settled out of court in January 2024. Puffy's homes are raided in March. There's no way you're going to convince me that a company that powerful, Diego operates in 180 of 194 countries in the world. They operate in 180 out of 194 countries in the world. You are not going to convince me that one plus one does not equal two. There is no way they were forced to settle with Puffy in January and less than two months later, his homes are raided. Watch this timeline. He sues Diego in the spring. 
Cassie comes out in the fall. He settles with Cassie in 24 hours. Diego is watching this. So when Diego decides to settle with Tuff outside of court, they did this knowing full well, we about to go after you and destroy you. You are messing with the Illuminati. You have no idea who you effing with, Sean Combs. And when Puff was so quick to settle with Cassie, that showed the whole world he was vulnerable. That showed the whole world he had skeletons in his closet. And do you know what I think Diego did after they settled with Puff? I bet you after they settled with Puff, they probably never even made it to the airplane. They picked up the phone and they called King Charles III. And they said, dear monarch, we need you to dial in a favor for us to President Joe Biden. Because this Sean Puffy Combs, this little nick out of New York City, he think he can go to war with the big boys and not pay the consequences. Sean Puffy Combs, that hip hop king out of New York, he think he can tell white people what to do. He think he gonna rob us for a couple billion dollars and get away with it. It's not going down. Dear King, please make that call on behalf of your citizens. That's what I believe happened. That his life ain't the only life that's gonna be affected. That they ain't after him just to get him. You got Homeland Security involved. You got the feds involved. I got news for you. They ain't coming just for him. They coming for a whole bunch of people. And I'm sure that's uh, probably not public information yet, but who's the person that's number one on that invitation list? Leonardo DiCaprio. And I can get on that list, yes, right? Yes, without a doubt, you are invited. That is so generous of you. Cheers to that. See you at the white party. Let me show you this clip of LeBron James speaking about how much he loves a Diddy party. Hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. Yeah. Ain't no party like a Diddy party. And so where is LeBron James, who has elected himself the mayor of speaking out when nobody cares to hear his opinion? Because if you're telling me that you use your, your platform to speak out when there are black victims, there sure as hell seems to be a lot of them when it comes to Diddy. Me out. Is it plausible that the reason that LeBron James is opting to be so quiet is because when he read that lawsuit and realized that Diddy had cameras everywhere, unbeknownst to his party goers at these freak offs. Is it plausible that he's got LeBron James doing something that he wouldn't want made public? I don't know. I'm just asking questions. I'm just asking for the king to use his platform to speak to us peasants. <laughs> When we say such things, developments are certainly foreseeable, but I cannot predict them sitting here today. A source familiar with the federal investigation told CNN that several witnesses who worked for Combs have been meeting with prosecutors. One male S worker is even expected to testify in front of the grand jury soon. According to the source, these witnesses have allegations that go beyond what was detailed in this week's indictment. Prosecutors have already interviewed more than 50 victims and witnesses in the case. To get a clearer picture of what might be ahead for Combs and his inner circle, CNN spoke to several legal experts. The consensus? A plea deal is unlikely for the music mogul, especially since these accusations could continue to expand. I will be very curious, especially since he's being held without bail, if that gives other survivors the courage to come forward," said Shay Rhodes, director of the Villanova Law Institute to address commercial S exploitation. For those allegedly involved in Combs' criminal enterprise, legal experts pointed out the tough decisions prosecutors will face, like whether to charge them or use their testimonies against him. The prosecution is going to have to deal with witnesses with a rough past or who are admitting to engaging in criminal activity, said trial attorney Misty Maris. You've got a lot of people with dirty hands in a racketeering case. Combs' attorney, Mark Agnafilo, has said he plans to appeal the ruling again. While many federal cases end in plea deals, Agnafilo doesn't think that's likely here and says they're preparing for trial. I believe he's innocent of the charges and he is going to go to trial and I believe he's going to win, Agnafilo told CNN. 
Maris agreed that a plea deal seems unlikely, pointing out that the ST charge alone carries a 15-year mandatory minimum sentence. I think what the defense is really saying is, okay, we're going to take it to trial because any plea deal would be unlikely to be so favorable, she explained. We're talking about charges that carry a minimum of 15 years. The idea that a plea deal is going to offer a light sentence is just not in the cards for this case. And there's still the chance that Combs could face more accusations. Prosecutors have made it clear that their investigation is active and ongoing, and they've issued a public call for any potential victims to come forward. They uh, will be speaking to more people. We found out that uh, these two individuals, and we have actually uh, spoken to one of them, they are both However, coming forward might be difficult for victims in this case, especially given the alleged history of violence against those who tried to speak out in the past. It's shame and fear of whether or not you're going to be believed, Rhodes said. Also, if these allegations about how he had really engaged his entire organization in covering up what was going on, who was not behind bars that can carry out additional intimidation tactics or instill more fear in survivors who do want to come forward. Despite that, CNN senior legal analyst Eli Honig doesn't think we'll see more charges against Combs, mainly because the racketeering conspiracy charge already covers a wide range of alleged criminal activities, from ST and forced labor to kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. The federal indictment against Sean Diddy Combs paints a picture of a massive conspiracy involving his staff, assistants, supervisors, and associates, accusing them of racketeering from 2008 to the present. According to the indictment, the so-called Combs Enterprise wasn't just Combs himself. It included his business entities like Bad Boy Entertainment, as well as employees and associates, everyone from security staff and household workers to personal assistants and top supervisors. Members and associates of the Combs Enterprise engaged in, and attempted to engage in, among other activities, ST, forced labor, interstate transportation for purposes of p prostitution, coercion and enticement to engage in p prostitution, narcotics offenses, k-napping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice, the indictment claims. But here's the thing. Despite these serious allegations, Combs is the only one facing charges. So why is that? Legal experts suggest that the lack of charges against others in his circle likely means some of them are cooperating with the prosecution. CNN legal analyst Joey Jackson explained, you have other people who you could say were his enablers, who are not being looked at by the government, who are helping the government prove their case. Prosecutors could offer these alleged co-conspirators immunity or non-prosecution agreements to get their testimonies against Combs, according to trial attorney Misty Maris. The reason prosecutors would do that is because the target in this case is Diddy, Maris said, to build a strong case against him. Their information and testimony are crucial. It's also important to remember that the lines between victim, witness, and offender can sometimes blur in cases like this. Shea Rhodes pointed out that this victim-offender overlap is especially common in cases involving S-violence and T, and it's possible that some of Combs' alleged co-conspirators were also victims themselves. The indictment hints at that, stating that one of the purposes of the criminal enterprise was securing absolute loyalty from members of the Combs enterprise, including through acts of violence and threat. So somehow Prince Harry has gotten mixed up in all of this P. Diddy stuff. And already the UK media is running with this narrative, but they're not giving you the entire facts. So P. Diddy is being sued by Rodney Little Rod Jen. He's being sued for 30 million for X abuse. And in the court filings, they do list Prince Harry, but one time, and there is context to that. It says, music producer Rodney Little Rod Jones said in court documents. Shoulder to shoulder with Meek Mill. I'm at a point in my life like we all grew up in the streets. Meek Mill has set the internet on fire after confirming the gay allegations involving him and Diddy. But the twist, he's claiming it wasn't by choice and is reportedly filing a lawsuit against Diddy for abuse. This revelation has fans and the industry buzzing, with Meek stepping out to clarify that he was manipulated and pressured into situations he never consented to. According to Meek, these weren't just rumors. Why haven't anybody came out defending Diddy? All these celebrity friends he have and nobody came out. They brand. It's all about the money. They saw what he did to Cassie with the kicking 
the punching. They saw what they did to Cassie. They know did nobody in America like that. So now these people are represented by a brand. Whether it's some about the music, clothing, movies. They not going to come out and speak on nothing that has anything to do with them. And they praying that they not on the tape. Diddy just went on the Talk To A podcast. Diddy, you're by far the biggest guest we've had on Talk To A so far. So I just want to say thank you so much for being on the number one podcast in the world. I appreciate it, Haley. You know I fuck with you. We go way back type shit. And, uh... Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean by way back? Oh, is that what we're doing right now? Really? So you're going to act like you weren't at my free golf. So don't be silly. Hey, what? I literally was there for like five minutes and left as soon as I saw baby oil come out. And mind you, it weren't just one bottle. It were like a thousand of them things there. Okay. Anything wrong with that? Well, I mean, a thousand is a bit much, don't you think? Now you tripping a brother like me needs to stay oiled up at all Pause. times, you know. Like moisturized? Yeah, moisturized. That's what I meant. Now, don't be asking me weird questions now because, you know, I've got tapes of you, right? And moving on. All right, next question is, if you ever got hot to and how did it feel? Of course, I've given hot to it many times. Come on now, enough of these dumbass questions. Diddy, listen, I literally asked you if you ever got hot to it. Like, got hot to it. Oh, shit. Not give hot to it. Not bad. Um, yeah, cut that part out. Yeah, of course, don't worry about it. Do you want to answer the question again? Or should we move on? Yeah, move on. All right, okay, next question. What did you do in the 48 hours you spent with a young Justin Bieber? Who should Hawk Tua interview next? What do you want, 50? Why are you visiting me? I just wanted to ask you a couple questions for the documentary I'm making about your downfall, Diddy. Why would I help you out? I could put some money on your books, get you a TV, PlayStation 2. There's nothing that would make me help you out. Not even for some baby oil. Baby oil? This whole drum can be yours, Diddy. All you gotta do is give me some more details. Who else was in those freak offs? Jay Z, Leo, Pix of Jayla will also work. No, I won't do it. Now I gotta get back to my cell and screw my cellmate Sam's boobs. Oh God, not again! Jada Pinkett Smith just dropped another bombshell, announcing today that she's pregnant with actor and comedian Chris Rock's baby. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Jada revealed the couple has been dating since last year, following the night of Will Smith's infamous slap. Apparently, seeing Chris Rock utterly humiliated reignited Jada's passion for him that had been bubbling since they both did voices on Madagascar 2, Escape to Africa. According to Jada, she and Chris quickly began trying to conceive and are delighted to finally bring a new bundle of joy into the world. They've even chosen to name Will Smith as the child's godfather. Congratulations to both Jada and Chris in welcoming their new baby, who, whether it's a boy or a girl, they have decided to name Tupac. Of Diddy's parties? Joe, I've never spoken about this before. A few years back, Puffy invited me to perform a comedy set at his 4th of July party. As a longtime hip hop fan, I was real happy that I'd get to hang out with one of my idols. Boy, was that a mistake. When I got to the party, Puff and his crew showed me around the mansion and helped me prepare for my show. There were tons of celebs there, I mean hundreds of A-listers. They were all drinking from a large tub of jungle juice near the dance floor. Puffy told me not to drink it until after my show, as it was really strong. Well, the first half of my set went super smoothly. My jokes were landing and the celebs were bursting into laughter. But as I continued, one by one, the celebrity audience started to collapse to the floor, seemingly lulled into a deep sleep. Once they were all unconscious, Puff came over and let out a big chuckle. He told me that the fun was just getting started. Diddy and his crew then started to pick up the bodies and lug them down the stairs to the basement. I followed them down the stairs, deathly afraid of what I might see. When I got to the bottom of the dark staircase, my jaw dropped in surprise. Standing amongst the unconscious bodies was Meek Mill, holding wigs, hair dye, and an assortment of makeup products. I immediately went over to Meek and asked him what he was doing. He told me that he and Diddy were launching their own beauty company, and they liked using the celebs to test out their new products. Apparently, they were far too embarrassed to ask the celebs for permission when they were conscious. I couldn't believe it. That was my first and last Diddy party.